She tells him, you know, I ain't even want you working at my store anyway because you don't even have any credentials. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> She's like, and on top of that, you can't even work at my store no more and Kill Bill gonna come get your ass anyway. He gets him, he's like, you know what? Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. I said, oh, he got a guy. He saw throwing shit at them, girl. They was throwing shit back at him. And he just walked off, y'all. I'm like, Suki, you dumb, you know. But she did say her grandma was the one that told her she should hire him. But yeah, the shit went left. And yeah, now I said, bro, you out of a job, girl. Okay, now you gotta be doing these Popeyes commercial videos outside of Popeyes. Hopefully, city trends, aka okay, sing. Okay. So yeah, y'all, that was funny watching. Y'all know, I don't know, I love Suki. I really do, but I really don't like how she treats Kill Bill. I don't like it, y'all. I don't like it at all. It's borderline abuse. So he out there, he talks to his brother. He's like, look, I don't know I can keep doing this. Like, she's disrespectful as fuck, and I can't keep taking it. Ain't no man gonna keep taking it. They show how disrespectful this bitch is. She's in the therapy session. Y'all know, when they went to the therapy session, I don't know if y'all know, because I said in my last video, this bitch, like, got this type of dress on. Like, you can clearly about to see her pussy. And you supposed to be at a therapy session? You can't even look like you are a little wholesome. Like, you got some type of sense in your head. Then she had the therapy session telling him, um, telling the therapist, yeah, and this is a priest. The therapist was actually a priest making so bad that, yeah, he beat his me all over the place in the bathroom and all that, and I don't want to hear, like, that's not nobody's business. And if it is, go to a sex service, or if it is, don't do the shit on camera. You are embarrassing him. Then putting him out the car, like, y'all, that last season was terrible. She was like, you old ass nigga, you bitch ass nigga, uh, get the fuck out my car, get the fuck out my car, like, talk to him like he was a bitch on the street, like, she had no love, like, they don't fuck, suck, love each other, smile, laugh, and play, like, they do none of that, she don't fuck with him, you understand, so, she was trying to put him out, she put him out, he was trying to play it off, then they sit there, like I said, she just texted him, nobody want to see your funky dick me self anyway, Like at this point, <laughs> your your brother should just tell you, man, you should be answering your phone ever again. Just like don't even answer your phone. You got kids by this bitch? No. Okay, so there's no attachment? Okay, so run. <laughs> just fucking run. Don't even answer your phone no more. And fuck this one. We need to leave this bitch and fuck it. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, just... But the brother was like, look, you telling me all this and you need to have these hard conversations with her. That's what you need to do. He was like, I can't even have a conversation with her. Girl, you can't have a conversation with the person that you're with. It's not worth it, Bill. It's just not. And you need to find, you know, a whole nother bitch. Like, because it's Bill's fault too, but you wanted this shit in the beginning and you liked it and you thought it was cute. You know what I'm saying? I can tell. And now when it's coming down on you, and this is what men go through. They like the shit at first, and then when it comes down on them, the bitch is really about that this type of fucking hood ass ghetto ass life and doing the shit to you. And then you gotta treat her a certain way. They don't want that type of smoke. You know, he needs to move on with himself because she's not the one. It seems like Kill Bill is the type of person who's loving and needy, wants to be cuddling and stuff. He's not really about that. He looks like he's with that, but he's not. You know, and she really needs a man who's gonna like. Oh God, her be all over time. Her bitch this, a bitch that. Man, do this. What did I say? You got that? You heard me, right? I ain't gonna say it once. She need all of that. And that he's not the one. She starts talking about, yeah, everybody around me getting money. He like, no, bitch. Everybody around you is losing money. And that's why that bitch put that voodoo on your ass. I was like, well, like, come on, Bill. What else? <laughs> hey, everybody. It's your girl, Sassy Sean T. So coming back with another video. Yes, honey. Back with another one, girl. Y'all get into this episode of Love and Hip Hop, Miami, honey. Yes, swing with your girl. Come over here on these spots. Sit in my living room. Chill with me, y'all. I just did Love and Hip Hop um, Atlanta. And so, yeah, y'all need to watch that, okay? We just had a little bit of fun on it, so go watch that video. Um, Anyway, y'all, the episode starts off with a model girl. Like, damn, a model is bitching and complaining and dragging ass and whining again about this damn baby child a girl why would you think he was coming when he said he might that gave a nigga a chance to tell you basically i'm not okay so you already knew what coming girl so now next thing you know she driving up to her mother to 
um, get some clothes for the baby. So they're there and they're talking and she's telling her mother, you know, the babies are smaller than the doctor's store and she needs to be on bed rest and they're also going to push her due date up. So, or back, one of the two. But yeah, she got to be on bed rest. So that means no stress. And when it means no stress, that means that nigga needs to be alleviated right now. You understand, like, he is a ball of stress in her life. Her mother should have told her, you know, my bitch, um, yeah, you don't need to talk to him. You know, I know you need to talk to him, but you don't need to talk to him until you have your babies. Call him all you want after that, but I need my grandkids here. So you need to dismiss this nigga for now. Anyway, um, Alan calls, you know, and she just excuses herself out the room because she, like, you know, she don't want her mother, you know, hearing her conversation. So, um, and she lets Alan know that, yeah, I, I didn't want to be around my mother. Okay, girl. Your mother already think you stupid about it, so it doesn't really matter, but you, what, don't want your mother to hear it, so you not, like, ask him why and why and why all this stuff. That's what it is. Um, so, Amada just thought I'll ask him, you know what I'm saying, did you want to have babies with me? And he said no. You know, he shook his head and said no real low, and it's just like, what was the point? You know, like she said, okay, I know it wasn't planned. Okay, it was planned if you wasn't using the right protection. It was. It really was. So, why would you... I think, personally, he might be trying to use a model. I don't know. I think he's trying to use her in some type of way. Because she is a model on that, right? He is, what, a real estate person in Dominican Republic. So, yeah, she's a cat. And I'm going to go ahead and nut up in her so I always can be connected to this bitch. You know what I'm saying? But for real, for real, he don't want no kids by her. And he told her. And I'm just like, dang, he flat out told you now, a model. So, at this point... You got to damn the whole situation. And just like she said, okay, now I know I can be strong for my children and move on. And he was just like, wait a minute, hold on. What do you want her to hold on for? You been having this bitch to hold on every fucking time. Then you lied to her in her mother's face, to her and her mother, that you want her to live with you, that you want her to marry you and be in your house and raise kids and all this shit. You said it's out your mouth. And then all of a sudden, you didn't want to have babies. You not coming here. You not doing that. He's terrible, and Amada, you gotta just, like, suck that up and say you made a bad decision. Like, all the rest of us, when we chose dumbasses, it's baby daddies. That's just what happened. And unfortunately for you, girl, you got to. Like, I'm sorry for you, Amada, but you have got to try to dismiss this nigga, and he no longer needs to be in your life. You know, and at this point, you need to go down to the court, get some um, custody papers and all that, and make sure, you know, you got your, um, what is that, child support in line and everything, girl, because, yeah, like, you got to kick rocks on this nigga because he ain't working. So y'all know the little different parts of the show. You know, they play music in between of each different scene. And they started playing so I'm like, damn, that sounds tight. And I'm always trying to figure out who is that. I was like, damn, is that Chris Brown? I was like, nah, that ain't Chris Brown. That's probably Trey Song. I was like, why would they be playing Trey Song with all this shit that he got going on? Y'all know a lot of bitches accusing him of raping or anything. So I was like, no, it's not him. And as soon my mind went to, no, it's not him, MJ face came up and he was saying, I was like, damn, MJ. You can really sing. I did not know he can sing. That nigga sound good, y'all. The track sound good. And I was like, wow. But anyway, y'all, y'all know he used to fuck with Amada like, what, like two seasons ago? Might have been last season. He's supposed to have been helping her with her career. And basically, she was getting tired of paying all the bills. He wasn't helping her in any way. Um, she just started feeling used. And the other people around her was telling her. Because then they show a clip. Now I'm remembering. Um, when the ex-girlfriend was like, she was paying for everything and he's extremely manipulative. So, maybe that's the case when y'all know. That's what they say. This is who he is. But anyway, Shay is telling him that she wants him to come to her little event. She got a type of wellness brand that she's, you know, promoting. And it's been doing very well. It's very successful online and everything. And she just wants him to come. But she got a huge, huge secret that she's been keeping, y'all. And we won't talk about it. So, Shay meets up with Julianne, you know, for the location of, you know, the function that she's having. And, uh, yeah, I'm just like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, she said her and Julianne been friends, and they're really close, you know. But y'all know he's the former manager of Trina and Amara, you know, that they basically dismissed because they say that this nigga was stealing, wasn't taking care of situations and, and problems and letting them know of what was going on and all that. So, basically, um, Trina had a big problem with him. She was real hurt, too. She was like, we were supposed to be friends. You were supposed to tell me about some money issue that was going on. People not getting paid around her, all this type of shit. She had trained him until Amada was like, shit, bitch, you need to let that nigga go because he ain't right. Amada was already saying certain things about him, so she eventually just told the nigga, you know, yeah, you can't match me, that's it. So, um, Shay is telling us, you know, that that's her friend, and regardless of what he goes through, you know, she gonna be there. So, Shay takes 
all of her coat on camera, you know, and she's cracking, you know, and she's just like, she's tired of hiding it. You know, she was like, she didn't tell her family because, you know, in the beginning of her pregnancy, she had five boys. Y'all, y'all know I just had five boys surgery, and yeah, I'm five weeks in. This is, it'll be my sixth week next week um, post-surgery, and I'm glad I got it. Y'all, I came with my period, and I've only been on for like four days, and it seemed like it's gone off um, today. So, I'm so glad. I don't have those long periods, and my period didn't hurt as bad. Like, I wasn't hunched over. So, the five boys surgery really helped me in that way, y'all. And if you got real bad cramps, um, I uh, actually started bleeding between periods, too. So, if you got real bad cramps, go to your gynecologist, tell them that, you know, I'm having real bad cramps, and it could be five boys. Y'all, I had a five boy anus. Okay, when I went to go get my pap in, she saw a cyst. I go, we gotta remove this. I went to um get the cyst check, you know, as far as like a um a cascade, and then that's when they saw the fibroids. She's like, we gotta do them both, you know. And I'm like, Ooh, okay, like, and I had to just go and put in for my six weeks. That's my job, y'all. But do what you got to, y'all. I feel so much better. I really did. But Shay said, yeah, she had fibroids and she had to get them removed. So she wanted to just get done with all of that before telling anybody you know that she was pregnant she just wanted to clear the and just make sure she, that she was fine her baby was fine so suki and her girls are walking up to isaiah they pissed they about to approach this nigga because he ain't show up to her store for the sale he abandoned the store he just ain't even been around she ain't heard from him on nothing and she is pissed okay meanwhile y'all they walking over there and this nigga is living his best life yeah we is outside we is outside he got the hookah. He just doing it up, honey. He is living his best. Yeah, he with his friends. And I'm just like, girl, they bought the nigga your ass. Suki, honey, lets him know you owe me some money. He like, what? You owe me some money? I've been working at your shop for six months, and you ain't paid me yet. And his confession, he was like, you know what? She owe me money, and, you know, if she don't give a fuck, I don't care either. And this is exactly how it occurred. She said, you supposed to be managing the store, and the store was a mess. And then on top of that, all the big girl sizes gone and the big girls couldn't even get no clothes i'm like you know what she was like and it probably was the um clothes that the big girls had on and your Popeyes video and all this shit girl she started calling him piggly willy and everything he was like what well, girl he was so mad she tells him you know i ain't even want you working at my store anyway because you don't even have any credit child i'm like you know what <laughs> she was like and on top of that you can't even work at my store no more and kill bill gonna come get your ass anyway he gets him he was like you know what fuck you fuck you fuck you i said oh he got a guy he saw throwing shit at them girl they was throwing shit back at him and he just walked off y'all i'm like suki you dumb you know but she did say so her grandma was the one that told her she should hire him but yeah the shit went left and yeah now i said bro you out of a job girl okay now you gotta be on these Popeyes commercial videos outside of Popeyes, hopefully at City Trends, and KSC, okay? So yeah, y'all, that was funny watching. Y'all know, I don't know, I love Suki. So Florence Shaw, the queen of Kumpa, okay? She is in rehearsal with her girls. Florence looks really nice. She really does. She's in rehearsal with her girls. She's doing a um, festival in Orlando, and she's going to be, you know, performing on the same stage as Kodak Black, honey, okay? So yeah, she's getting ready for that. And then on top of that, Marlon is gonna be on stage with her, okay, y'all? So anyway, um, they're doing that and everything. And after, you know, the little rehearsal, her and Marlon are talking, Marlon like, you know, she real nervous. She like the festival's coming up. I need to practice tomorrow in the morning. Like she's really, you know, trying to find some time but she needs to practice all the time because she's nervous. And he's like, look, don't even think too much into it. You know, I got the real issues. You know, I still don't have an outfit. I'm like, are you serious? Like a day before you don't have the outfit, or are you lying? Like this is where my head would be with him, y'all. Because to me, if I was throwing anything, because he's talking about, oh yeah, then I gotta go to the studio, then I got, bitch, I don't trust any. If I can't see you right, not even to the side of me, okay? Because you could be behind my back doing all that. I don't know. If I can't see you, I don't trust you when it comes to Marlon. So anything he said, and she was just really sitting there like. So people are made for each other. If she can still not go back to her mind and have this trust, like, that's fine. But I know I couldn't do it. Like, I was thinking to myself, when he was saying all that he had to do, you know, away from you, I was thinking to myself, girl, is he trying to get away from you to get in other bitches' faces? Or is he going somewhere that he know he's not supposed to be going to have excuses? But this is just me, y'all. I wouldn't trust, I don't trust Marlon at all. So she's in her confessional saying, yeah, I know Gael has something to tell me, but um, I really don't want to hear it, you know, and she's completely blocked. Bitch, are you dumb? 
So you know that she was itching. We all saw that. That she was itching to tell you something, girl. And you didn't want to hear it. Like, you ain't like Kendra and Chop where you about to get married. So no, hold on now. I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm about to get married, please. I don't need that in my hand. You've been going through this shit with him forever. And you still don't want to hear it. Like, you know it's some shit. You know modern it is some shit. And then you drag your ass to some type of voodoo stuff that you know your whole family will be against because that's not even your religion. You go, you let him drag you to some voodoo shit to try to make like y'all close and y'all got some type of connection. Like, you dumb as fuck. Like, for real. And you ain't got no business doing that. Once again, falling into what he wants and him trying to brainwash you as if it's just about you and him and it's not. You know, and I don't know how long he can continue to do this and you're going to believe it, but at this point, bitch, you're the fool. So anyway, y'all, Florence is talking to her manager and the manager is telling you, you know, um, just go on the stage and do you. You know, I know you're nervous. Go on stage and do you. You'll be fine, you know. And yeah, they bring up how it's three other of other Haitian girls who are in the industry, you know, in the music industry, and they've been hating on her, you know, and she says she's quickly surpassed all of them and they're mad, you know, and this is how it is when you got haters, y'all, they are even online so she can't sing, she can't dance yeah, but she got the look and that's all that matters sometimes that's really all that matters and everything else comes later, that's just like the people that judge the book by its cover you know what I'm saying? And they like what they see. And Florence is really easy on the eyes. She's thick. She's pretty in the face. You know, she seems like a very nice and sweet person. And maybe she's more relatable than y'all other Haitian bitches. I don't know, but she got something. She got the fucking sauce. <laughs> so Kill Bill, y'all, okay? Um, I just be feeling so bad for y'all, you know, when it comes to Suki and how she deals with this man, how she talks to him. It's just trifling. And just like he said, no man should be dealt with like that and disrespected like that. It's just too much, you know? And I don't know who raised her. It's a pack of dog bitches who raised you, bitch, because you act like a heathen. It's just sick to watch. I like Snoopy and everything, but the way you deal with him in that relationship, I don't like it at all, and it's just tasteful. Anyway, Bill and his brother are on the side of the highway looking for her wedding ring that she tossed out the window when she got mad about the flowers, him giving her um, dead flowers for Valentine's Day, and a half-eaten box of um, oxtails or something like that. Bitch, that's what you mean now. That's what you mean him. And you keep shitting over him and you don't think he's supposed to shit on you back? Like, I can't stand bitches who do this type of shit and then think it's not supposed to be done back to them. Like, anyway. So, he's out there telling his brother, man, I don't know how long I can keep doing this. But Suki, you know, she's disrespectful and I don't like it. Next thing you know, Suki is calling and she like, yeah, you, you trying to make something out of something. He like, the camera's out here so you, you really want to do this in front of the camera. Bitch, stay right here in my face. So they get off the phone. So he out there, he talks to his brother. He's like, look, I don't know I can keep doing this. Like, she disrespectful as fuck, and I can't keep taking it. Ain't no man gonna keep taking it. He's saying he fucked up with her because she's saying that um she's supposed to be spoiled because she's a superstar. Bitch, who says that? Who said that's just good and good? Who says that? Like the people around you supposed to bow down to you because you're so you bitch. Uh, okay. Like, you want people beneath you, that's what it is. And then you told this to your man, bitch, it's not a competition, it's a relationship. Meanwhile, you trying to belittle this man by having him to do all of these things for you in your career. But like he said, he's suffering on the back end because he wanted to be a star and he wanted to be a rapper. So now, like he said, his career suffered because he been helping your ass. And he keeps saying and bringing this up, y'all. So eventually he's going to resent her for that. He really is. Because he like, every day is all about her. You know, then she texted him. The brother sitting right there, he's just looking at me. His brother's just looking like, damn, man. His brother really looked like he wouldn't even be dealing with no bitch like Suki. So that's probably even, all oh, this shit is probably like rocking his skull. So MJ and his mom meet up, Shay's mom too. And MJ is asking her, you know, she's there for the reveal. She's in town for the reveal, her and her husband. He's asking her, you know, how has you and Shay's relationship been? And she's like, yeah, um, it's been fine. And then they go to the clip with, you know, Shay mother and Ayala talking and Shay mother you know she just said some foul ass shit to Ayala about her child she was like yeah Shay gets into it with everybody and she's always cussing everybody up having everybody crying and stuff and she's just evil and she's just horrible and she's a date you know and Ayala told Shay's mother um excuse me mother to mother you 
are way out of line. You know what I'm saying? Way out of line. And I'm just like, exactly, bitch, where do you think she got it from? Okay, that's just the fucking, don't just blame her for being the way that she is. Where did she get it from, y'all? I could go on about this topic, but I'm not. Let's move on. Anyway, um, the mother was like, yeah, so she learned some stuff from a young whatever, but, you know, shape can, you know, get out of line and she ready, you know, she get out of line again. You know, the mother still like shit. I ain't gonna let that bitch treat me a certain type of way. And it's probably because of you. It's probably because of you, the way that she is. It just don't fall out of the sky. And then for a mother to talk about her child in that way, like she a demon, she's horrible and all this shit, but she came from you, so what she saying? But anyway, the mother asked him, you know, how was he, um, dealing with, you know, after him and a mother. I'm thinking to myself, that situation so oh, why are they bringing that up? You know, because now they're trying to make them talk, have some type of conversation. And he like, okay, well, that's fine. You know, if she want to have a conversation, I'll have a conversation with her. But, you know, at this point, I'm just thinking, why are they have a conversation? What is the point? Mom the influence goes to see, like, some voodoo priest, and, you know, it's just strictly not their religion, so she's kind of hesitant on it, but she's not. She goes with anyway. And they're dressed in old white to just cleanse themselves and all this stuff. And Molly, you're trying to act as if you're cleansing y'all because of all the shit that's about to come out. That's just what it is. You're trying to act as if and tell this woman it's all about me and you and nobody come, can come between us. And, you know, we needed to do this just to clean our life out and all this other shit because you know shit is about to hit the fan, y'all. So, you know, Florence is with the okie doke with this dumb ass shit. She knows something is happening and is about to happen this big. And she's going along with Marlon. She's always going to be with Marlon. That's how I see it. She's always going to be with Marlon. And it ain't no way out of it. And Florence is dope when it comes to him. So, y'all, Bill is in the studio doing his thing. And it sounds good. I was glad for Bill. Like, it was really a lot to sound good. You know, Suki is walking all up to the studio looking all funky. She sit down. And he's telling her, you know, um, you just don't support me enough. You don't support me. And she was like, well, I've been supporting you this whole time. You know? And he like, no, you haven't. She feels like she's been doing him a favor because if it wasn't for her, nobody would even know him. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, she's done him that favor anyway. And my thing is, Bill, you know what? She right. Cut the bitch off. Like I said, cut the bitch off and do your own thing. Yeah, you got a little clout from her, so there you go. Run with the shit. Fuck her. You know what I'm saying? It ain't even no sense to keep going on with it, but yeah, they go on with it. She starts talking about, yeah, everybody around me getting money. He like, no, bitch, everybody around you is losing money. And that's why that bitch put that voodoo on your ass. I was like, like, come on, Bill, what else? <laughs> she up there telling the producers, yeah, I helped you build your page on Instagram. He was like, I'm not making no money. She told me something, yeah, that's because you lame. You fat fucking bitch. I said, no, she did not. Like, damn, they be going low, honey. Then he was like, yeah, that's why you had to return that 2018 Bentley, okay? I said, oh, they get real nasty, y'all. And this is what happened when you say anything out your mouth. People like, sometimes y'all, y'all got watching these relationships. You just can't be saying anything to him out because people remember that shit you know what i'm saying and i don't know y'all this relationship needs to be over you know i was a fan of this you know for a long time i wanted their relationship to work but it's not gonna work because they two different people you know what i'm saying and he has resentment towards her he really does now and suki don't even see it y'all so, so it's the day of shades reveal and yeah mama d walks and i'm like oh shit you know so her and bobby beat up they're so excited to see each other they go over to the mom bobby like look i need a cocktail okay have you on the cop <laughs> i say i know that's right bobby so they at the bar and mama d is telling him you know scrappy is really mad at me and cussing me out because i'm here to support shay y'all know mama d loves shay she wanted them to get married and like she said um she would rather than be married to the person other than the person with the hoops meaning baby that's so distasteful disrespectful to brandy and i wasn't here for it like uh, if baby's going to dig in your shit i'm sure she is for that one you know like she always does so anyway she tells bobby that yeah scrappy met up with shay a couple months ago and said that they're just friends you know so they trying to make it special, basically, y'all, that this baby could possibly be scrappy. That's the way they trying to act like it possibly could be. Because she's not telling anybody her baby's father, you know? And so she reveals to her family and everybody that she's pregnant. She comes out. She looks really, really pretty. She looks really pretty. I mean, really pretty. She has, like, all this gold. has, like, rose flower gold on it or whatever. Her belly is poking out. She got a heart right over her navel. Um, yeah. Shay just looks really, really pretty. So she reveals to everybody, everybody, mouths are dropped. You know what I'm saying? The mother's like, 
um, Mama D is like, and they're happy for her, Jenny. They really look happy for her. But then Shay asked him, brother, you don't look excited, you know, in front of everybody. He was like, yeah, um, who's the baby daddy? And she was like, yeah, we'll talk about that later. They go over talking to her mother and everything, and her father. She's talking to her mother and father, telling her what her due date is, and that she wants her mother to be in the um, delivery room with her. And the mother's like, okay, well, where's the father? You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, next thing you know, they show Mama D and some other girls. I forgot. I think Bobby, too, over there, you know, asked him, you think it could be? She was like, I don't really know what's going on. I don't know. So they leave it in our hands for us to think that it's crappy. But I don't think it's crappy. I really don't. I think that it was just a coincidence that maybe him and Shay met up. But I don't think that that's his baby. But well, what y'all think? Y'all leave it in the comments what y'all think. So anyway, y'all, Shay does a gender reveal. And yeah, pink fireworks just go up in the sky. I'm like, oh my God. And she really looked happy. She was like, it's a girl. Like she had just found out too, y'all. So I was really excited for Shay. And she looks gorgeous, you know. And I hope her family is, you know, excited for her too. But I really want to know who your baby father is. Girl, I really would like to know. You know, so yeah, y'all. That is all for this video. So y'all, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I will see you ladies and gents later. Bye.